Hello and welcome to this tutorial about how to paint a parrot in watercolor. If you are a beginner, this is a beginner friendly, intermediate friendly tutorial. So I'm just going to kind of go briefly over what I've done thus far. I am using Arch's hot press um, watercolor paper, uh, which is good for pencils, markers, different mixed media I find. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and sketched in very lightly in a photo blue uh, pencil back here some little branches of tree that's back here. So you may not be able to see that but then I've taken some watercolor pencils and I've sketched in my parrot. Some of the warmer areas, the cooler areas, all right, kind of give me a separation of where I want my colors to go. So the way I'm first going to approach this picture is I'm thinking about the background first. I'm going to work from the background forward and become more detailed as I get in to the final details on the parrot. So let's get started. First, I'm cleaning off my palette, which is super easy to do. Um, I like to start fresh every new painting. Of course, you don't have to, you do you. Sometimes we have a lot of extra paint left over in our palette and we want to use that up. However, I don't think I really have that much. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a fresh palette. If you aren't subscribed to me, consider subscribing. I do have a lot of videos coming up, one of which is I will be setting up a bigger studio palette and choosing some of my favorite colors to go in it. So what I'm doing is I'm just spritzing some water on here, cleaning off my palette. Quite easy to do, it's just a little metal tin. Okay, for those who are more intermediate, I'm sure you know how to. Okay, so now that this is cleaned off and I've spritzed my colors to let them kind of get softened up and going there, Oh, another thing I forgot to mention is that I have my paper um, taped down, partially taped down. Let's go ahead. I'm going to show you how I tape it down. I just use some painter's tape. You can use masking tape. Um, you can use washi tape. Whatever best suits your purpose, but I actually really enjoy using this tape. And I've never had any difficulties with it since I mostly only use it on the outside of the paper. I don't think we're going to get any kind of issues from it. Like I said, I've never had any issues. I quite enjoy taping down my paper. And what I'm using is like an old cafeteria style tray that is very smooth and flat. So it gives me a nice surface and I don't have to worry about how much water I get down there. All right, so now let's get started. I'm going to use just some water and kind of lightly go around my parrot so I can get the background in there. We don't want too much water, but we also want to make sure that we get a little thin coating back here. Mm -hmm. If I go over any on this parrot, it's not going to hurt it at all. See a little bleeding there? That's to be expected. That's not going to hurt it at all. Alright, now I'm coming around. So I can 
I'd rather have color there than like a white outline left. So that's the beauty, I think, of using watercolor pencils. All right, so there's that. Now I'm going to start dropping in some of this gray here throughout and letting these colors kind of just dance together. Um, the reason I'm not doing it, I'm going to go ahead and mix some Payne's Gray. Oh, that's not Payne's Gray. Maybe I should put some of that in there. But I am going to mix some Payne's Gray in here. Uh, in some of the more shadow areas here. And we're keeping it very nice and moist at this point. At this point, I just want to try and keep it a bit wet. Don't let my edges dry. Keep the paint brush moving. I kind of am switching back and forth between Payne's Gray and my other gray. Oh, it's neutral tint. That's what it is. Daniel Smith neutral tint. Okay. That makes sense. So, I'm going to let that just kind of try not to touch it too much here. I'm liking that, but I do want to come here on some of my edges. I do want to bring in a little bit on the other side of this beak here. Alright, but I also... What I'm doing now is cleaning up some of these edges. But you can kind of wet a paintbrush. Kind of scrub out any kind of hard lines that might be going on with it. Dry it off. And just try to clean that up a little bit. All right, now we're going to let this part dry, and then we're going to move on from there. All right. So, um, yeah, so I started adding a little more color before I turned the camera back on. Boy, does that happen pretty often. But anyway, <laughs> I decided to go in here um, and blend while it was still wet. Blend in just a little bit of the magnesium blue hue. I feel like I also came in here with some Prussian blue down here in some of the shadow colors. So what I generally am trying to do is just try to do some brush strokes, not too much. It's getting a little wet in here, so I'm going to let it dry again. But I am going to go ahead and come in here and begin to work on the inner part of the bird, making sure that I don't get out to the outside yet.
Move some of those. All right, now I'm going to rinse my brush off really good, dry it really good, and come in here and start to pick up some of these um, lighter areas here. Letting the brush do some of the work. All right, I'm going to get some more of this yellow and come in up here on this edge just a bit because I don't really want any kind of white line left there. And we'll just mark in a few extra feathers here. There we go. Let this dry. I'm going to come back and work on the chest here. I feel like we still need a little bit of yellow in here, but we're going to be mixing it with should I do it? Yeah, a little bit of this orange, I would say. going to get at a stage where it just is not looking good. That's okay. It's called the messy stage. It goes through that. Every piece will go through its messy, hot mess stage. <laughs> so I'm going to let this completely dry. So I'm letting this dry. And I'm kind of deciding that the gray is okay, but I think I want a little bit of kind of just a hint of where the ocean line may be. And maybe there's a little bit of, I don't know, some sun coming through here. So um, uh, anyway, long story short, I think I'm going to go ahead and bring in, I'm going to wet my background here. All right. And I think I'm going to bring in some of this transparent yellow oxide into the background a bit. With it still wet. I can bring in the gray and the blue. And that's going to give me a little bit of a hint of a beach back there. Again, I'm going to come into the gray and let that kind of Come down to some more yellow. So I have a variety of colors here that you might find on the beach. All right. I'm going to let that dry. But I'm going to come over here to the other side. Kind of do a little bit of the same.
just kind of putting in some feathers that we will uh, so I want to fire in a little bit more in here and then I'm going to grab just a bit of this Hanes Gray I want it to come in right here on the shadow part you see it follows the water because the beak is still dry we'll follow this water up into that I'm gonna let that dry for a minute but this part of his beak is also dark so I'm gonna go ahead and put in that layer using the paint's gray Well, thank you for joining me on part one of this tutorial of how to paint a parrot again give me a thumbs up subscribe if you found this video tutorial helpful and join me on part two which will be coming up very shortly all right thank you